something I've wondered about with computer aided writing, and I know that you write in your head and then you listen to it for feedback, so it's not like the computer is telling you how to write or anything, but um, I wonder as an instrumentalist, like, how do you allow room for expressivity in the actual quirky instrumental playing? Um, I mean, I know you know it's there in your head, but when you're hearing it played back on the computer, how do you calculate what you're hearing and allow for the, the personal element as well? I, I can't answer that for other people. Mm -hmm. I know no, just for, for me that, uh, that an important part of the reminder that what you write down is not what you're going to get is playing yourself. I'm a perfectly adequate, not fabulous pianist. That would I need to be a perfectly adequate, not fabulous bassoon player. Ah. And, um, in fact, having a wind instrument or, or a non-keyboard instrument and, and, um, and a keyboard background at the same time actually I f gives me a good perspective on, on remembering and, and continuing to experience, at least at the piano, what it is to play and what's valuable about playing. Um, so there's, there's that aspect of it that I'm not that attracted to the absolute precision of what you mm -hmm. get back on a computer. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's not even really a precision because there are so many parts to any note that a real musician makes. There's the attack, and then there's the body of the note, and then there's the decay. Mm -hmm. And the computer doesn't really have it. It has a, like a square peg sound. Yeah. And um, it's kind of an unattractive sound, and trying to account for the three-part sound of every note, I think, is is one of the, the best things. And so I don't actually think of what the computer plays back as the precise version to which a performance is supposed to aspire. Mm -hmm. I think of it as the other way around. Right.